Hey everyone, it's Lisa with Are You My Cousin? It's Thursday, so it's time to talk genealogy once again. So um, I'm excited to be here again. I do come here each week to chat all things genealogy with you guys. So certainly excited to be here again this week. As you are finding, as, as people are finding me and finding the, the live stream here and coming in, feel free to let me know where you're watching from. It's always a lot of fun to see where people are from. Um, I am, if you are just finding me for the first time, I am coming to you from my office here in North Carolina. So we have a beautiful day, although I think there's some rain coming. Uh, it's been nice and toasty warm here, but like it is often here in the spring in North Carolina, it's going to get a little chilly come in the coming days. So Anywho, it's a good time to be out doing genealogy, that's for sure. Um, so welcome, welcome. Um, I am super excited again to talk with you today about one of my favorite topics, which is WorldCat and how to use WorldCat in our genealogy research. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, while you're coming in, let me just give you a couple announcements of things that are up and coming here on the Are You My Cousin YouTube channel, both here on the YouTube and Facebook groups, as well as on the website. So I have just finished um, videoing and uploading the YouTube videos that are going to go live each week for the rest of April. So I'm very excited about those. Next week, I'm particularly excited because I'm going to be talking about genealogy education and how you can perhaps pursue some education opportunities on your own from home. So that'll be an exciting one to come up with, to look forward to. And then the next two are a couple, um, a little um, a little different, but some I hope can teach you some new skills maybe you haven't used before in your genealogy research. So I will leave you with that little teaser for those. So anywho, the other thing you may have noticed is if you are on the YouTube channel, then you may notice there was a join button that appeared at the top of my YouTube page. So what that is actually is an opportunity for folks, if they so choose, to join my YouTube channel. Now, before I go to nothing changes on the YouTube channel, guys. I will continue to upload videos every Tuesday for, for everybody to see. Totally free, nothing there. But if, if you want to go a little bit deeper, if you want to... Um, show support for the channel, I do have a join button where you can join at two levels where you can have early access to the videos that come out weekly. You can get some behind the scenes video of things that I do here in the office and some of my research. And then there is the opportunity at, uh, at the elite level to get some very focused kind of what I almost call hot seat type of Q&A questions where you can submit pre pre-submit questions for a monthly live that I would do for that particular group. So totally optional guys, but I just wanted you to know what that was, but there is, as the YouTube channel stands, it doesn't change the way it is. So just wanted you guys to know that. Um, I am actually not seeing any comments show up. So that's, that's a bit unusual for this, for this channel. So if you guys don't mind, if somebody doesn't mind, whether you're on YouTube or watching on Facebook, would you let me know where you're watching from? Because I want to make sure everything is everybody is viewing and seeing things as they would like to. Oh, yay. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. Uh, I do appreciate that. Um, my platform here that I use for live streaming has done some updates, and I just wanted to make sure um, things had not um, been, had not gone a little askew because that does happen occasionally. So wonderful. Um, hey, Lucy, thank you so much. You're from Ottawa. Yay. Deb, great. You're on YouTube. So I've got both YouTube and Facebook are seeing me. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate that um, for that. So anywho, let's see. What else did I have to tell you about? Let me check my notes over here. Um, for anybody who is just now finding me for the very first time, again, my name is Lisa. I, um, I do run the Are You My Cousin website. YouTube website and YouTube channel. Um, I will post every week. The videos come out on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. And then I come here live on Thursdays. Um, just to let you know, next Thursday, I will not be live. I will be out of town and I'm not 100% sure I'll be in a spot where I can actually um, come to you live. So I'm just going to let you know next week, I will not be live, but um, we will resume after the week after that with Mary on our DNA. Our DNA expert will come and talk with us. So anyhow, that's where we are. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So it looks like everybody's seeing things great. Stephanie's watching, working in the kitchen. So your hands are busy. Okay, Stephanie, 
I love that because you know what, when I watch videos and stuff like that, a lot of times I am in my kitchen doing things like that as well. All right, let's jump into WorldCat. So if you have used WorldCat or if you are familiar with WorldCat, will you let me know in the comments, just put Y for yes, do you, you use it or familiar with it? No, you've never heard of it or, or don't use it. That'll be, you can put an N, that'll be great. And let me know because it is something that I have used over the years. I've been aware of WorldCat since well before my genealogy days. Um, because I'm such an avid reader and that's what I would use to find new books or to access books I wanted to read that maybe my local library didn't have. But it also has a tremendous amount to offer us as genealogy researchers and it is another tool that we can use in our genealogy toolbox um, to help us find our ancestors. So it looks like we've got some who are familiar with it, some who've never heard of it, perfect, um, and some who use it. So wonderful, that is excellent. Um, thanks guys. So what I'm going to do is actually show you, I'm gonna take you over and share my screen. But first of all, what is WorldCat? So it's worldcat.org and it is basically the world's largest card catalog. Think of it like one of the largest card catalog and it allows you to Re look for books and other materials in, in libraries around the world. So it does allow us to, to research for books and other types of materials that we can find that are perhaps housed in other libraries that may not be local. And then we can pursue them as researchers, maybe through interlibrary loans. So there's some other uses for it too, but let me show you how that goes. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and share my screen, guys. I'm gonna head over, um, let me get, pull that up for you guys. There we go. You should be able to see that. Well, all right. So I'm over here at WorldCat and it is, it's worldcat.org. Let me drop that into the chat here for you guys. I think this is, oh, no, that's not it. Let me grab the, let me grab the URL for you real quick and we'll put that in the chat and that way you'll have it. But you can also just Google it if you get online. Here we go. There you go. All right. So while we're here at WorldCat, they have recently, if you haven't been on there for a while, I think it was sometime last summer, maybe last fall, where they kind of redone their, uh, what they look like. So they've updated it quite a bit. And there's definitely, I'm finding it has some more uses for it that I hadn't used it for with research before. But again, certainly you have the opportunity to look for books. But one of the things I wanted to show you really was here at their homepage, because this is Quite different than what it used to be is if you scroll down you, they'll they'll just highlight different reading lists different types of information with march having been women's history month certainly they have a whole section on that and they so they have a whole women's history reading list which i thought was really fascinating because the reason is when we think about researching our female ancestor you guys have heard me talk about this so often it is so important to understand who they were as women and what were their causes, what was dear, near and dear to their heart. And for instance, these are books about suffrage, learn, getting the vote, sisters, the lives of America's suffragettes, um, American women for the settlement, uh, for the settlement of the, to, from the settlement, from settlement to present here. So we have a lot of, they're not all going to be definitely you know, the time periods that we're working at, but we can certainly find a variety of, of books that we might want to, to learn more about our ancestors because it is so important that as those women, we understand what they did so that we understand what records may have been created. So, you know, here's one on Rosie the Riveter, um, Ida B. the Queen. I actually just got that from my own library. I haven't read that yet, so I'm looking forward to that one. But again, trying to learn about the lives of these women and what it might have been like. So, Looking for social history, these are the kinds of reading lists that we would want to look at. Now, they also have a, let's see, we can go up here to topics, which is another great place to go. I like to go, and I wanted to show you this because this was something, um, they actually talked to me about this. They actually have an entire section here on genealogy. So this is a this is something new. They were, they're working on creating topics and more reading. So we can go into that and, oops, there it is, um, learn more about it. Now, this is a pretty general, so this is, I'll, I'll be honest, the homepage for the genealogy is really probably going to be, um, you're going to be beyond that most most likely, unless you're really just starting out, those of, those of you who follow me typically are, are 
this isn't going to necessarily be what you need, but it does help you. I did want to highlight this. So when you're using it, that we understand how to search with WorldCat. So here it talks about, you know, using just your main search page. It talks about using multiple terms. So again, like Presbyterian, Baltimore, Maryland, and it doesn't, this is a really important guys. WorldCat does not search for spelling variants. So we have to try those spelling variations. This is very important. Um, and I can show you how that works in a minute. But if you are researching and maybe you are using, um, so they show it up here. Here's a good example. This Union Springs, New York or NY, you will get different than spelling out New York fully. You will actually get different because um, I tried that out and you get different results. So I want you to make sure you see that. Um, so that's what they have. So they definitely have those kinds of topical types of lists that you can explore on your own. There, you know, you may find other things that you're interested in finding out as well with that. Now, what I use it for is I like to search on specific items. Um, so I like to search for the items. So think of that like books. It's books, it's articles and things like that. So let me do a few searches. And one of the first ones I'm going to do is um, just a straight up Talbot genealogy, because that is a um, one that I research. So if I type in Talbot genealogy, I can click and we'll see what we, the results here. And so we can, these are going to mostly be books. Now you can see up here, I have 1400 results. That's actually quite a lot of results, uh, more than I expected. There are some ways to filter this out. So I can set a favorite library being you know, the Wake County libraries, ones that are on the open access. I'm going to show you that in a minute, whether I'm looking for books, eBooks or microform. Um, and so an, an author and creator. So I can do that as well. Some of these are going to be pertinent. Some of these are not. So as I look through these, one of the first ones, this would catch my attention right here. Talbot genealogy, the genealogical history of Peter Talbot, the immigrant, and some of his descendants. Now, this is actually a book that would um, catch, it, it did, it caught my attention. So I would click through. Here we go. And this is what it's going to tell me a little bit more about. It. Obviously, it's been, it looks like it's been written by a descendant, um, perhaps there. And I can click here to get a little bit more information about this book um, here. So this is, if I scroll down, tells me a little bit more about the details about the book. And then if I go down, it tells me that 19 libraries have different um, have different editions and that this one is the closest one to me. The Johnson and Wales University is the closest library to my location that actually has this. So at this point, I know that um, if I wanted to find this one, then I would click borrow and or I would go to my local library and request an interlibrary loan through there. So if you ever find a book like this that you want to do, but you're not sure about it, you can you can certainly do it online or you can um, go and work through the process with your library, local librarians as well. They will help you do that as well. So that's one way to do it that way. Um, they also give you some options if you're interested in buying. If you look over to the right, you can buy some as well. Now, if I go back, I wanted to show you a, another one that caught my eye. Uh, let's see here. So we see lots of different this would definitely would catch my eye. This is a print version as well. Um, it is genealogies of early families made, made history in the founding and development of Bedford County, Virginia. Um, I do know that would be absolutely my ancestors. would have, That would have been my guys. If I come down further. Oh, I'm, okay. There's one specific one I was looking for that should come up and give us a. Oh, I cannot believe it. All right, let me try it again here. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. There should be an ebook in here. And you should be able to watch. You know, I tested this out, guys. I really did. And now it doesn't give it to me. Um, let's try a different one. I should be able to find one with the. Uh, let's try. I know. Sometimes if I add two T's, I get better results. Let's see if that does it. 
All right, so I've got a different set of results here, as you can see, two T's versus one T. So yeah, that's giving me, as you can see, it's going to give me different results. And that's an important thing to know about um, with that. Again, print books, manuscript books. And again, not all of these are going to be genealogy related. Um, here's something with the genetic genealogy. Oh, hang on, I lost my cursor. This was an interesting one that I wanted to show you. So this is Talbot tree. So this is an interesting thing and it caught my attention for a couple of reasons. But one, obviously I had the two T spelling, which isn't quite as common. But if you notice when I, it is, this is the newsletter. This is the newsletter for genealogical information or genealogical data and history of the Talbot and variant spelling family. So it's, and it mainly came from France to Great Britain and later left England, Ireland, Scotland to America. That's pretty much the, the path for my ancestors. And again, including, you know, down into Virginia. So, but what caught my attention, guys, this is a newsletter. I would never have really thought to look for that or might have not found this particular one that sounds like it could be helpful to me if I hadn't looked at it through WorldCat. So this would be one that I would try to perhaps pursue um, with that. And I would scroll down and what I would find down here is that the libraries would be the closest one is the National Society of the DAR um, up in DC would have that as well as Family Search Library. So I could pursue trying to get hold of those copies. But again, this is not something um, I would have thought to look for. I don't typically think to go and look for newsletters and they don't necessarily pop up if I'm doing Google book searches as well. So that was one of the other reasons I really like to use this particular um, site. Now, one of the sites will show you, let me see, there's also, you can look for specific books I wanted to show you. Let's see. Um, the Kali family of Sylvania. Yeah, counting. Let's try that. Aha. So this is a book that I that would be, uh, that would also have some of my ancestors in. So you can search by certain books. And then somebody had recommended it to me a long time ago as a researcher. And so this, I actually went on to WorldCat to find out who had this book. And so it tells me who has this book that is the closest to me. And again, that's another way to find it. This one actually, I think there is, there should be, view access options so I can only get through interlibrary loan. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I used to be able to get this one through, I believe it was the, they had ac email access to, or excuse me, website access to it on um, internet, at, on the internet archive.org. But um, I think with the recent ruling that has seems to have changed. So again, there we have it. Um, you can also look for books. So when I'm looking for social history books, again, I might want to find histories of local areas. So maybe one of the ones I looked up recently was Wheatley County, Tennessee. Or I just I think I just did a Wheatley County history because I was interested in learning about the formation of that county, who settled it, because I know a lot of people from the area of Virginia where I researched did settle there. So here we have a lot of, oh, this, that's giving me more people. Let's, um, let me, let's try, I may have to spell it out. Oh, okay. So history of Tennessee in the earliest time to present. So this would be an interesting, but ah, here's, here we go. Together with historical and biographical sketch. So this would talk about some of the folks there. If you find a book here, it says access for free. That means it's an ebook. You can click on that and it will take you to the site that has that for free. And let me see. I think this is, this took us to Hathi Trust. So then I would be able to read it over there. Oh, except I just realized it did not take you there because of my settings, but that's how it's going to take you. So if you click that, that will take you to be able to read that one for free. That one goes to Hathi Trust. Again, it allows me to learn a little bit more about that county because I want to know who are these people. 
I recognize these surnames. I want to know who they were and who settled that area. So I have the option on this one to, to view it online, or I can also click through and request it through interlibrary loan as well. So let me come back and see how you guys are doing over here. So, uh, cause when I'm sharing the screen like that, I don't see the, I don't always see the um, comments. So let's see what, make sure I'm not missing anything over here. Um, Stephanie's been to Johnson was, I've never been, although I, I grew up not far from it. Um, so yeah. Okay. Looks like we've had, again, that mix of using it and not using it. There's another thing that I kind of wanted to show you with that as well. You do not actually have to sign in for WorldCat. You can create a free account. Um, I did that. It allows you to bookmark your favorites in there, but you can wor use World Account without an account as well. So either way is fine. Um, but there's, you may have noticed there is the list button over here. And these are basically reading lists. So again, I talked about that women's history list at, at the beginning, but they have, and then they have other lists as well, reading lists. So if you have other areas of interest besides genealogy, you might want to check those out. But one of the things I wanted to see what they had from a genealogy perspective. And again, I found just typing this in genealogy, keeping it very broad. When I got tried to get too narrow with it, it for, on the list side of things, it didn't work out as well. But when I did it, just a just very broad genealogy term, what we find is there are actually 116 lists that fall under that. So that can be worth perusing through. And with 116 lists, you can actually get through viewing those lists pretty quick because you can get 50 to a page and pretty much zip on down. So this is a series of I thought this genealogy in Buffalo and Erie County, New York. So if someone is researching there, this might be an option for you, you that you would want to follow this particular list. It looks like the Buffalo History Museum is the one who created it. If we click through, we can see the items there. Yeah. And so these it's just a nice collection of books that and it looks like there's some microfilm in there um looks like there's some archival material but it's a nice little collection to peruse through you know a researcher might find things that they hadn't thought to look up look at before so again if you have when you create a free account here then you're able to actually save it as a favorite or follow them um and so that when you know, new new things might be added, then you would be notified that things have been added. So these are the kinds of things that you might want to consider looking at lists. Again, it's only 116. And when you think of the, in the scheme of all the genealogy research that we do and all the locations and all the, the types of things we could do, it's not a lot. But if it has the one that you need, then that's great. You know, so here's one on how genealogy. So that's an interesting one. Um, that we have Barbados genealogy. So I've actually had somebody talked about that recently. So some of these are going to be pretty general, but for the ones that, I, you know, here's from some for the Ukrainian genealogy, you might be able to find a few things. Again, it does include Yorkshire genes. So this is across the pond, so to speak. So we have some options to look here. So it might be something worth your while to go and look and see if some of your research interests are there. Now, there's one last thing that I search for when it comes to using WorldCat. And you guys know that I'm always in the search for family Bibles, right? Um, and a lot of my, my followers are, are, are in the search for family Bibles. And I get that. So the interesting thing here would be I can find them on WorldCat. So these are going to typically be, you know, like copies of family Bibles that have been put out there or transcriptions. So we can actually we can actually search for them. We can go back to that Talbot name and put in family Bible and see what we find. And we have 144 results. That actually is a really nice find there, don't you think? So here we have, um, here's one right here, 1750, 1753 to 1878. This one's from the DAR. Um, actually gives quite a bit of information there. Here's another one. These, this is again archival material. This one's an it would be of interest to me because it is a Bible record from Bedford County. That is a, an area where my ancestors did settle my line, and it talks about actually the birth of the slaves or enslaved persons. So this would be a really important 
um, one I'm going to pr probably pursue when we get through with this call, quite frankly. Um, and it does let you know, like if somebody's in the family, so here we have the Brent family, but it did pick up here, you know, the women who married into that. So this is another way to find perhaps the evidence of the family Bible. Sometimes they will be books. Sometimes they will be a microform. Sometimes they are going to be transcriptions that are in places like the DAR um, up in DC. So these are going, this is again, finding evidence of that family Bible is so important. And then we can click through and see how we might be able to access it. Because again, most likely, you know, I'm not gonna be able to actually borrow it from the family. It looks like actually they have it from the family search library. Um, but I probably can't borrow it from some of these, but then I perhaps could view what my acts. It says to interlibrary loan. Some, sometimes what I have found is that it doesn't always work that way. And that what I end up doing is having to reach out to the library um, that says they have that and say, how can I perhaps view this? Can I get a copy of it? Um, and how's the best way to do it? So kind of the first battle is finding the evidence of the record that you're looking for. And then the second one would be being able to get a copy of it. Because sometimes these things are in um, closed um, collections that do not share out, but that's okay. You do have, at that point, you would need to actually reach out to that library and say, hey, okay, great. Um, I recognize you don't, you know, put out that particular book. Can you look something up for me? Do you have somebody there who could do that? You, know, you may have to hire somebody to go in and do it. So I would just get on the phone and have that conversation first. Um, and usually I found library, you know, they're incredibly helpful, especially even with these books that are so um, maybe that aren't available for being loaned out. So, all right, let me see. Here we go. Um, Donna says, roll cat to see what books exist. Yes. And where they might be close to you or put up and go to the interlibrary loan for you through your local library. Exactly. I do the same thing. I use it to see what's out there and then request it through my, through my local library. Definitely. When I did th that one book that, um, the one I did on the Collie family out of Pennsylvania County, Virginia, I actually, somebody had told me about that. I, I went into WorldCat and I found out that that book literally was at a library. Um, I don't think it's, it didn't look like it was still there, but 10 minutes away from my house. And so you can bet I got down there really fast <laughs> to find that one. So um, Lucy's in WorldCat now and has already found items. Yay, yay. Vicky's not heard of it. Definitely want to look into it. Is it mainly for finding books? I would say yes, but with that said, you can find things like articles. You can find things that are going to be on microform. So you do, there are some archival type materials in there. I do think it, mostly I use it for finding books. I probably would use archive grid, looking at special collections for more archival type of things. Um, but yes, so you will find both definitely. Never thought of searching for family Bibles. Absolutely. You never know until you look, right? And that's why I always, when people tell me there's no family Bible, I'm probably going to say, but have you checked here? And have you checked, you know, have you checked WorldCat? Have you checked Archive Grid? Have you checked all these places? Um, it is, I will say WorldCat is very similar to Google Books because you can do very similar things with Google Books. Probably, I don't know that you would find the archival material through Google Books, like those microforms that we were seeing listings through Google Books. Um, I like the format. I just visually, I like the search process a little bit better at WorldCat, but um, but yeah, you could try both. If, you, if you're not having good luck at WorldCat, try Google Books and vice versa. Definitely. Um, so Donna said her library requests the interlibrary loans for her. Yes. And if it's not lent, they asked me if there is an index that they could supply the names. And that's been very helpful. Yes. So sometimes if the book won't, can't be lent out, you can ask about the index and get a view for the index because then you know what's actually in there. You know, sometimes we're just trying to, we're on fishing expeditions with these books and we're trying to find out what's there. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I find the, libra the librarians are going to be incredibly helpful with that and they know what they have as well. So definitely. I just, it's a way to find possibilities and that's what we, you know, when we are faced with those brick walls, we have to, I think one of the ways that we prevent ourselves from trying to progress with our research is 
um, not looking for these other types of resources, not use it. We've got to be able to use tools that are not necessarily specific to genealogy to be able to find these kinds of things. But yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, Vicki said she didn't know she could find old family Bibles online. Oh yes, yes, you can. Um, we need to have a, we need to have a, um, we need to have a discussion. We, we should do it one Thursday on finding old family Bibles because guys, I got a ton of ways for you to look for old family Bibles, definitely. Um, so yeah. And Amy loves finding new research tools. Yes, yes. I think when we're so sometimes, and I'm so guilty of this, I guess really um, into certainly the main, the big four main de genealogy databases, um, you know, the ancestries, the find my past, the my heritage, the family search, because I mean, that's, that's what we do, right? I mean, that's so, they have such amazing resources, but we, they really are the tip of the iceberg when you think about it, because when you think of the libraries that are out there, the other archives, and there are just so many other research tools that we can use in our back pockets or that we can you know, always have at our fingertips that we can use that are going to help us get make progress. And that's one of the things I think that was one of the biggest turning points in my own personal genealogy research when I realized that, hey, I need to be using other tools. I need to use these other searching research tools that could perhaps look in these special collections and things that perhaps that ancestry and that the other databases don't have access to as of yet so it's kind of a big just a you know i have a kind of a whole checklist of things that i keep at my fingertips so i know okay i'm stuck did i check this did i check have i checked worldcat for these items have i checked you know didn't i didn't have success so maybe i should check google books and didn't have success there how about I'm um, particularly looking for maybe special collection type archival material? Did I check archive grid? So I have kind of a list of tools like that that I use. Um, yes. Okay. So it sounds like you guys will definitely like a talk on, on family Bibles. I will get that scheduled. Um, so probably a couple of weeks. So next week we're not meeting. And then we have our DNA talk with Mary. So maybe after the DNA talk with Mary, we can do family Bibles because I love talking family Bibles. Um, Lucy said, yes, definitely has to look elsewhere for those. Yeah. Um, there's just, there's so many places out there. I kind of reminds me sometimes of when we were like in high school and, you know, you had to do these term papers and you had to use all the, I'll never forget. I think it was in, in high, my senior English class or in the big term paper we had to write and, and we had to use a college library. So we couldn't just do it. The, you know, granted, this is pre-internet stuff, but we had to use a college library because we lived, you know, I, I, um, I grew up outside of Charlotte, so we had access to um, the UNCC there. And so, um, yeah, so we would do that. We'd have to learn all their, you know, how to search in their databases and on site and that kind of thing. So it was, it was, a, it was intimidating at the time, but um, I'm very thankful for the skills that I had to have to be able to research those. So yeah, definitely. All right, guys, I am going to wrap it up there and let you guys get to exploring WorldCat there and enjoying that. Um, feel free afterwards, or if you watch this on the replay, if you find something really interesting, be sure and drop it in the comments and let me know, because it's always fun to see and learn and learn from you guys as well. I love to, you know, it is an opportunity for, um, for me to learn as well, and then I can pass it along to others. So um, obviously, Gerald had a question. Could you find a book on ship passenger lists for Austria people for the year 1906? And uh, that's a good question. Um, hang on one quick, one quick. Let me type that in there, Gerald, before we go. And I will see sh ship passenger list. 19 Let's see. I think it's going to have to go kind of broad. Um, hang on one second. I, let me bring you guys up into sharing this. Let me share that so you guys can see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go here and go home. Hang on, find my. Um, list. Let me just try that. Let me go. Let me go really broad before I filter it down, just to see what we're getting. Okay, so we get 188. So we are getting some passenger list. Now let me put in Austria and see if that helps. Is that the right term? Let me go back in and make sure it's the right term he was looking for. Yeah, Austria. And hit. Um, 
So it's still giving me the checks. So now we're down to 10, Italy. The Bloom Family Collection. Is this the right? This, this might be something. I'm not 100 well, sure. Sure. So that would be, I think that's Austrian. Uh, da, 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 da. What you could end up running into might be, I'm not seeing anything else here. You could potentially run into issues with being able, with records being in certainly German as opposed to um, English, but that would be, I would say go ahead in there and play around with that a little bit more if you want to, Gerald, and see, but I would, you're going to have to kind of, I would keep it start broad before you start to narrow that down for yourself in the, in that thing. Um, you might want to perhaps do a, a search um, on um, I'd say keep it a ship passenger list. You, you could just keep it really broad and just go ship, ship passenger list in 1906 and see what time period you get that way to see if you can start. I'd play around with your terms a little bit on that one. So anyway, Oh, hey, Matthew. Good to see you from UK. All right. Um, thank you, Vicky. Vicky wishes me a happy Easter. So wonderful. Matthew said, finding French ancestors is so far. You've noticed that their surnames change constantly from generation to generation. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of that. All right, guys. I am going to let you go. Head over to WorldCat. Start exploring. Be sure and let me know in the comments um, what kinds of fun things you find out about that. Because I'd love to. I'd love to see what it is you're finding. All right, guys, have a fantastic day, and I will see you in two weeks. Not, um, I will see you in two weeks, not next week, but in two weeks. So have a great day, guys. Bye.